Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So imagine this, you just replaced a battery on a BMW and all of a sudden your car lights, windows, safety systems just start acting up. Or even worse, they just stop working all together, okay? I'm sure this happened to many of us once in our career and this happened to my client's customer uh, as they were replacing uh, the battery, you know, a routine replacement and the FRM got bricked. Okay. It's a nightmare, but it's also a common situation. So today I'm not just going to show you how to program the module, but I'm going to explain what actually happens inside the module and why it's so vulnerable and what steps you can take to prevent this costly issue from happening to you. All right. So let's jump into it. Today's presentation is called how to program an FRM module on a 2011 BMW 328i with the Maxisys Ultra. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent all-tail diagnostic consultant. Whether you're starting out and want the right tool strategy and support or you've already invested in a tool but need extra skill sets to transform your business, that's what I specialize in, okay? So if you're ready to take your skill and business to the next level, head on over to alltailtech.co.za Book a diagnostic tool consultation so we can start turning your potential into performance. So this is what you're going to be learning today. You're going to see the essential tools for programming an FRM module. You're going to recognize the symptoms of a bad footwell module. Uh, what happens inside the FRM when it gets bricked. Uh, preventative measures to avoid FRM damage. And steps to safely program and code a footwell module with the Maxisys Ultra. The tools that we used in this case study were the following, the Maxisys Ultra, a battery maintainer, very important, and your FRM module. Okay, so to give you background on this case study, my client received a uh, vehicle from an auto body repair shop. And what happened was after the structural damage, the vehicle just, you know, the FRM just stopped working. So lacking the necessary tools and ex expertise, they sent it to my client along with an understandably upset customer. Okay. So new to programming, my client was aware of the challenges in, uh, when doing programming on the FRMs. So that's when he booked a consultation with me and this is what we're going to go over right now. Okay. So if you're completely new to, uh, BMW, this is a very common problem, and I just want to identify what this uh, module does. So the footwell module is responsible for controlling many of the car's electrical functions, such as the lighting, windows, and mirrors. So it acts as a hub for these systems and communicates with other control modules in this vehicle. Okay, It's typically located in the floor compartment uh, near the driver's side behind the, the side panel trim and it's mounted securely and connects directly to various electrical systems in the car, okay? Now the symptoms of a bad FRM module are non-functioning lights, your headlights are not working, tail lights, um, indicators are not working, inoperative windows or mirrors, um, dashboard warning lights, you know, you have persistent error messages or check control warnings, and interior light malfunction, flickering interior lights, interior lights not turning on and off properly, okay? Now, Here's the question, what happens inside the FRM when it gets bricks, okay? I feel we must understand the underlying technical process that can lead to this failure. And here is an explanation of these key components involved, okay? So we have an FRM module here, and one of the key components is the microcontroller, okay? The MCU, which is like the brain of the FRM modules. It controls everything. The the module, uh, like turning on the lights, uh, you know, the windows and so forth, okay? Uh, next is the RAM, the volatile memory. So think of this as short-term memory. It holds temporary information while the module is working, okay? Then we have the flash memory, non-volatile, and this is the opposite. Flash is long-term memory where important instructions and settings are stored, okay? And next we have a voltage regulator, and this part makes sure that the module gets the right amount of power. And next we have the reset circuit. So this acts like a safety switch. It keeps the module 
uh, turn off until power is steady and safe okay now this is what happens um, when the effort the, the effort relies on stable voltage to function correctly it receives power from the car's 12 volt battery which is regulated to voltage suitable for its components typically like 5 volts okay however if the battery voltage drops significantly the voltage regulator within the FRM may fail to maintain a stable output so here are some examples like uh, battery voltage drop so if a vehicle's battery is weak or nearly depleted it might not supply that 12 steady volts to the FRM this can occur during extended you know periods of inactivity or if the battery is failing next is um jump starts when a car is uh, jump started the sudden influx of current can lead to a temporary spike followed by a drop of voltage now depending on the condition of the donor uh, battery or cables used you know next is battery reconnections reconnecting a bmw car battery after it's been disconnected for repairs or maintenance can cause voltage fluctuations particularly if not done smoothly okay um the other uh component that gets messed up is the volatile memory so ram requires consistent power to store data temporarily right now if the power is interrupted or fluctuates the stored data can become scrambled now if the FRM tries to execute a command from this corrupted memory it can also result in malfunctions all right and then if we look at the non-volatile memory the flash now this uh, flash memory holds the firmware and configuration settings okay now if power loss occurs during a write operation or if a software update is interrupted the data can become corrupted. This prevents the module from booting uh, correctly, leading to a bricked state. And then we have the microcontroller, microcontroller malfunction. So when the RAM is corrupted, the microcontroller might execute random instructions causing erratic behavior. It leaves uh, the lights on, fail, uh, it, it might leave lights on, fail to communicate with other systems, or even cause boot loop or the module continuously restarts without functioning properly okay and then the reset circuit failure the reset circuit in the FRM is meant to keep the system inactive until the power is stable now if this circuit al allows the module to restart too soon the microcontroller might begin working with corrupted data worsening the situation and potentially damaging the memory further okay and there's environmental and electrical damage so like if water damage or faulty wiring can, uh, may create shorts in the circuits leading to electrical overloads, uh, these issues can cause irreparable harm to the internal circuits of the FRM. All right, so that's what happens um, uh, when the voltage is too low, and you know all these components play a vital role in that. Okay, now how can I protect? the FRM when disconnecting the car battery okay so I came across this tool when I very like when I started consulting one of my buddies uh, introduced it to me and it's a battery memory saver so when replacing batteries in BMWs it's important to use a memory saver when disconnecting the battery and this will keep the FRM powered so it doesn't lose its settings and pre uh, pre preventing voltage fluctuations that could otherwise cause serious damage to the FRM and other sensitive components. All right. So some key points about the uh, battery memory battery saver. You're going to plug it in um, into the OBD port disconnecting before disconnecting the battery. Then the memory saver will provide the backup power to the FRM and other modules. And this allows the battery to be safely changed without losing any vehicle settings or data. After reconnecting the new battery, the memory saver can be removed. So this is just a, uh, a good way to keep um, that voltage at a current state, you know, um, when, when changing out the battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the procedure. Um, the first step I'm going to do is just the initial diagnostic diagnostic scan um, just so I can see if there's you know any other underlying conditions all right so we go ahead and ID the vehicle and uh, 
it's a fairly easy procedure, but as again, my client, it's his first time doing programming. He just felt a bit more comfortable if I would do it with him. Okay, so I'm gonna erase the codes and then I'm gonna go to the list view and the Altel is gonna present all of the faults on the top here. And if we look at number uh, two, the football module, we can see that we have all these uh, error codes here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is step two, programming the FRM module, selection and setup. Okay, so once I get out of this menu, I'm going to locate the programming button, all right, which you can see right here. And then it's gonna give me some prompts. All right, this is just a warning, all right. Once you make sure that you have um, the right amount of battery voltage, you're gonna go ahead and continue. All right, if you have information on the vehicle, we're gonna click okay. And then um, it's gonna, gonna ask us, uh, I think if the control units were replaced. Let's see here. All right, so it's going through everything. And here we go. Were the control units replaced? We're gonna go ahead and click yes. And then we're just gonna scroll down and we're gonna look for the module that we replaced, which in our case, it's the FRM module. All right, so we're scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. And you can see it right here. We're going to go ahead and click that tick, that checkbox, and click OK. All right. And then uh, after this, it's going to take us to the menu. All right. And then from here is our step three. We're going to execute the action plan programming and coding completion. OK. So we're going to click programming and coding, selective update. All right. And then we're going to locate the FRM module and we're going to select all three of these programming, encoding and replace. So if you're new, programming involves updating the uh, updating or installing the software onto the vehicle's ECU. Um, this process can involve, you know, writing new firmware to the module or include updating from the manufacturer uh, customization. Encoding is the process of uh, configuration. OK. It doesn't change the underlying software. All right, so we're downloading the files now. Download complete. So you want to make sure you have good internet and a valid Altel subscription at this point. All right, so it wants us to connect through the USB cable, which we you can see it here, that little light where it says VCMI, that means we have it uh, through the USB. And we're going to let it do its thing. Okay, you don't want to tamper with anything make sure that you know when you're programming there's no interruptions and stuff and this is just going to go through the whole process okay well each section to go to 100 percent successful and we're going to get some prompts here you're going to just follow the instructions turn off the ignition for 10 seconds all right nine eight seven six three two one Okay, that was easy. So we insert the key, remote control in the key slot, and then turn the ignition on. And once we do that, the Altel is gonna detect it and it's gonna prompt us to the next section. Okay. All right, so it's asking us here, all doors, windows, and soft top converter must be closed. Then the windows will be opened and closed. All right, so uh, once these conditions are met, We'll click the, the checkbox and then we'll continue. Okay, so we're letting it do its thing. We got another successful updating the vehicle order, update integration level, clear fault code memory, and all right, turn the ignition off and remove the key from the remote key slot, then wait for 10 seconds. Okay. So we'll do the countdown. Three, two, one, and that is done. So insert the key remote control in the key slot and turn the ignition on. Three, two, one. Okay, so there's our final report. Okay, so now what I want to do is the final diagnostic, clearing the fault codes, and verifying the success. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, exit out of here. And then we'll go back to the auto scan. And we're gonna scan the vehicle. Okay, you can see there's a there's a fault there. And then once that gets to um, 100, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do a quick erase. And that should be good to go. And that's that. There's no more fault in the FRM module. Okay, these aren't our problems. <laughs> All right, so in summary, uh, protect your FRM and other sensitive modules when doing any battery replacement on the BMWs. Consider using a battery memory saver. Okay. Um, next, if you brick the unit, you can restore the firmware because the hardware itself is still intact. Okay. It's a software issue that has been corrupted. So um, if you let's say have a, the Autel Ultra or you know 909 or 919. Um, if you don't have the understanding of how to fix this yourself, you can outsource this to somebody, okay? They can, they can restore it for you. Um, if you don't have the capacity to restore a brick footwell module yourself, you can purchase a used one and program it using the Maxisys Ultra. That's also a, another alternative. Um, if you do replace the footwell module, make sure you use a battery maintainer to establish consistent voltage throughout the process. When you're working with these BMW, they're very sensitive to uh, uh, like voltage fluctuations. So you always want to make sure that you have um, the right equipment to ensure a successful programming event, okay? And then lastly, if you feel comfortable with programming on, on the FRM modules, consider learning how to restore corrupted FRM modules. This can open up an additional amount of income opportunities by offering specialized repair services. This is what I call productizing, productizing your service, okay? Um, I have many clients who I've consulted where they put this in um, their service deliverable as a productized service, and you can make a quick 250 bucks, all right? So if you guys want help with that, um, and you want the right tools and training on how to do that, uh, head on over to alltelltech.co.za, book the diagnostic tool consultation, and then I'll be able to sort you guys out with the right tools and training, okay? Uh, with that, you guys, I uh, uh, hope you have a good week, and to the next one. See you again. Take care.